We're going to be looking at global illumination now. And what global illumination is, is basically uh, it simulates the effect of light bouncing off surfaces in the 3D scene. So it creates additional lighting effects in the diffuse and ambient areas of your objects. Um, and what mental ray basically does, it uses a photon tracing technique to create the global illumination effect. So what that means is basically there's a light source in the scene that emits photons and it's these photons that bounce around the scene and absorb and reflect uh, surface properties off the objects and actually create the indirect illumination. So what we need to do to actually set up GI is three things. We need to define a photon emitter, so on the light, and uh, global illumination receivers and transmitters. So the first thing we're going to do is select all the objects in the scene. So you can really easily do that. Set your filter to geometry and just select all the objects. And I'm going to turn them on for global illumination uh, receiving and transmitting. Once that's done, we're going to select the light. And on the photon tab, we can turn it on for global illumination. Now the last ingredients we need is to actually just enable global illumination for the region. So we'll turn that on there. So we can't see the effect. I'm just going to bring up the intensity of the GI first. So we can actually see the photons. And there we go. We're seeing the actual effect of the, the photon tracing. Um, and basically on the light, uh, we've got a few controls here. We've got the energy, so we can control the actual color of the light independent of the actual light color. So that's kind of interesting for creating certain um, uh, special effects with the lighting where you want to cast a certain uh, light quality into the scene, light color. Um, at the bottom, we're able to quickly use the light color as energy by turning that on. Additionally, we can just drag and drop the color from one to the other to get the same effect. So there we go. Um, and we've got an intensity control. So right now I've just set it to a million. Um, and you can see as I bring down the number of photons, so now we're just going to use 100 photons, you can see they're quite a bit brighter. So that intensity is distributed uh, evenly over the number of photons. So if you bring that down to say 10 even, we've got 10 photons in the scene and you can see each one is is uh, white hot kind of because they're they're each distributing that photon intensity um, across the number of them. So let's bring this up to uh, thousand, and you can see as I bring up the number of photons, we're we're smoothing out the look. So we can go to two thousand, and we're getting a smoother look there. Um, on the actual region and render settings, we have additional global illumination options. Um, we have a control for accuracy, and what that does, it controls the blending between the photons. So if I bring that down to, say, 1, you'll see the photons don't blend with each other. They're very distinct and separate. So as I bring that up, we can slowly start blending them together and creating a smoother look. So what you want to do is based on the number of photons you have, bring up the accuracy so uh, you get uh, a realistic result. So at a certain point, as I bring up the accuracy, it's not really having an effect because the photons can only be blended so much um, because there's only so many. So as I bring up the actual number of photons, uh, more blending can occur. We can also specify the radius of the photons. So let's just bring the accuracy down again, and we'll, we'll bring up the radius. So here you can see that, set this to 2,000 for now, 200. So here you can see we're, we're now relying on the radius setting to calculate the actual photon size. Um, if this is set to zero, then the photon radius is actually computer by mental ray based on the actual scene dimensions. So it's going to figure out kind of the best sized photons to use to get uh, a decent coverage. 
So oftentimes that's good enough. Um, but you do want the manual control depending on, on the scene um, and, and how you want to optimize it for rendering. So the big trick is basically to put enough photons in your scene. So let's go something like 5,000. And um, we'll bring up the accuracy. So you can see we're smoothing the effect. We're still getting some dimpling. So let's bring up the accuracy some more. Bring the photons to 10,000. So as I'm, I'm increasing the number of photons, we're filling in the GI effect. And we want to keep increasing the blending between them. So let's go to 20,000 here. So just to see the difference, as I bring down the accuracy, we're getting less blending between the photons, so we're getting more of a stippled look as we bring that up. And generally, an accuracy of about 500 uh, works fairly well. Uh, the big thing you want to control is the, the number of photons. Um, and the radius, if you bring this up a lot, what you'll do is you'll get a very smooth effect as you can see here we're increasing the radius uh, quite a bit and we're getting a nice look but the thing is there's a price to pay with accuracy so in highly detailed models where there's a lot of detail you want a lot of photons to go in there and resolve um, accurately the the bouncing of the light and create the detail you want if you increase the radius too much you'll get a very smooth uh, stable look but you might not get as accurate as results. So it's really a balance between creating the right number of photons and uh, keeping your radius at uh, a manageable size to resolve the detail you need. In cases like this, where it's all very, there's not much detail, it's very open, you can bring the radius up uh, and smooth out all the detail, all the, uh, all the photon noise kind of to get the look you want. So that's a quick look at how globe illumination works in XSI.